that's true. So the next, the, the, the next step um, beyond painting is building your own by kit bashing together ah, different kit bashing. I, cool. I had an interesting experience as a kid mm -hmm. where my family was going around shopping for a new house, mm. and we went to somebody's place where they had an extra uh, shed on their mm. property. But it was a little bit larger than a shed. It was like an additional garage. Oh, wow. But the person who lived there was the most into modeling I've ever seen anybody in my life. Wow. And when we went into the shed, it was wall to wall <laughs> with model kits, uh, different spray painted levels of, 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 work and it was almost all of it was kit bashing wow. this person had must have purchased every bottle known to man <laughs> several times over yeah. and you could just see the creative juices that uh. they, they they had from mixing and matching things designing their own cars and battleships and wow. airplanes uh of course that predates <laughs> yeah, right. i'm old <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But I, I always wonder what, what, what that person's life must have been like because I didn't yeah. actually see that person, but mm. I saw the their workshop, wow. and it was just a phenomenal experience. Yo, I can imagine. Gosh. That's amazing. That fit in there? And that fit in there? Is that how that works? B4. Yep. Another B4. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of B4s here <laughs> waiting to become. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, one of the nice things is that once you get rolling on, you know, once you do leg one, then leg two gets a little easier because you remember, oh, that's right. I did this it's just now in the reverse. <laughs> yes, in fact, here's the piece I just popped off. Um, a 16. No, no, that's a different one. There it is. Check and double check. Check and double check. <laughs> Trust but verify. <laughs> Yeah, there are some amazing things. If you guys check out the, um, I think it's called the Gundam World Tournament, hmm. where people will, um, where, where Bondi actually has folks submit their Gundams, their, their, their model kits for judging. And uh, oh. yeah, and you see that their creativity there. Uh, it's, it's just absolutely stunning. Some of the stuff folks have come up with. That's what we were looking at the other, the other day. That little video of uh, some incredible creativity, craft work, um, and then eleven, a eleven. There. Hmm. Yeah, kit bashing, of course, starting with the first Star Wars movie when they were. Having to build all of these models, all these well, literally models of star destroyers and such, and so they just go to the the model kits, model hobby stores, and uh, buy a shelf of those. I was listening to Adam Savage talk about that, and he said the the funny thing is now they will like they've they've parted out all of those things, so they will tell you that you know um, this thingamabob on the star destroyer is this fender from a you know shelby model kit <laughs> um you, you have to go and buy and this is th this thing from, th from this bit so uh they, they you know that they know where it all comes from now i've got to go back and and <laughs> and frame by frame check through some of their models <laughs> yeah. oh i know what that is <laughs> I'm, probably, I'm sure that i'm sure it would, it would uh it would be clear it's funny uh powering up the uh Folks who are who are involved in television mm. will recognize uh, uh, when they're powering up um, to destroy. Um, oh, suddenly now all my brain has escaped me. <laughs> uh, when they're getting ready to fire up the beam to destroy mm. the planet, mm -hmm. they use a Grass Valley switcher to fade <laughs> up. And nice. now it's you go back and you look at it and like that's a TV. <laughs> That's, 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 that's awesome. a TV switcher that they're that they're using to destroy a planet. <laughs> that's great. I never thought about that. Uh, of course, those are I mean, all. Most people weren't familiar with it at the time. Right. Just a few who are in the industry, and 
And so the, the vast majority of people are going, oh, look at all the blinky lights. <laughs> look at all the flashing things. Well, I always like, wondered, yeah, how do they get all of these panels of, you know, of uh, buttons and lights and so forth? <laughs> yeah. oh, of course, <laughs> like, oh, that's a that's a broadcast yeah, mixer there. That's Skywalker Sound right there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So when they fade up from, <laughs> they, <laughs> they're fading that planet out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> What's even funnier is going back to really old sci-fi shows mm. and looking at uh, all the stuff that makes up a mad scientist laboratory. <laughs> you know, the, the plasma balls, the Tesla coils, the, the things with the electricity that run up them that you can make. Yeah. Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at some <laughs> of that up the other day. Um, we can actually build a, what is that called? The... Um, the, the one with the, the rods, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the wires that go up and the, the other yeah, goes I can't up remember like that. a ladder, oh. Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder. That's yeah. it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> those things are incredible. Yeah, you can you can make those at home now. And, and of course, there's all sorts of cautions. Yes. There's some great YouTube videos, but always be careful first. Safety Definitely. first. <laughs> yes. Um, to quote Doctor Who, um, um, be safe as you be safe if you can, but always be incredible. <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it's it's that's cool stuff. Ooh. It's always dangerous to say things like this on air, but I think it would be awesome to do a every couple of weeks just a um, a weird science project. <laughs> you know, just build it. Oh, that would be fun. You know, put it on YouTube. Um, we were looking at a thing the other uh, just today actually about uh, making a uh, a bow out of PVC pipe. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, I came across a neat thing about using. We have those uh, those lights there. Um, what do they do? They 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 put those lights in. Oh, strip um, LEDs. Yeah, strip LEDs in um, balls of cotton, hmm. and then they wire it up. Oh, they, they, um, they got some that you can wire it up to um, like an Arduino to change the colors. Ooh! So you literally just hang it from somewhere, and it's this constant coloring, color changing. Um, thing and because it's all wound in with inside the cotton, it's this very vague color oh, changing. Wow. It's really neat, that and it's very good. cheap. So I'll have to find that out. Find that one. You know, it, it, so much has has happened over the past few years. Mm. It used to be uh, very simple things. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, 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 you know, there's so much complexity these days that can be built into something, yeah. starting with a very simple and moving up before it, there was a threshold mm. because of the internet and people's access to different uh, inexpensive uh, resources. Yeah. And now, what used to be, okay, string some Christmas lights around your ceiling, <laughs> you can take LEDs, you can flash them, you can change colors, you can do totally. all sorts of light shows. Yeah, and it's not that expensive anymore. No, um, yeah, and th th some of the programmable hardware, where they've now got what is it, the, the little bits, where um, they're literally snapped together, uh, you know, motors and lights and sensors, and you just clip them together magnetically, and you have a circuit. Nice! Wow, that's pretty awesome. And I remember folks talking about how amazing it is that you know, now with the cell phone, um, the development of the cell phone has now made so many things so much cheaper, where now you can get, like I said, the Oculus Rift runs off of cell phone screens. Um, and there are all sorts of things happening with um, developing nations where they can now get access to a lot of things more cheaply because People now know how to make a billion of these things for five dollars each. Um, so there's all sorts of, of improvements um, to our world, just driven by um, you know, the previous step in sort of uh, electronic evolution, if you will. It's it's it is amazing. All right, so there's that thing, um, and now we go to the next bit. A14. Hmm. I see that attaching. Hmm. I don't see where it attaches to. The Gundam Guy blog. I'll have to check that out. Hmm. That sounds kind of neat. Yeah, it's just some amazing kit bashing, they say. I can only imagine. Um, let's see here. 
you know, if I'd thought it through, I would have downloaded that video um, of all of those model kits and then played it back at slow speed. Huh, maybe we can uh, do that in post. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, so where am I? A4, ah, down there. A14, A15. Well, that's convenient. It's right next to it. A15. Hmm. You got to feel bad for the uh, the guys where you know this. All of these designs start as some mecha designer scribbling around on paper and hmm. saying, "It'd be cool if that's flared, and if that fits into there, and all this kind of stuff." And they don't have to worry <laughs> about animating it. They don't have to worry about making the model kits. They're just making these cool drawings. Just the dis drawing <laughs> itself, yeah. Uh, and then somebody comes along and says, "Well, how is that going to actually work?" Now, not only does it need to do that, but it's got to. Also, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of goes into design. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, on that video they were showing how um, they have that that awesome cutaway of the, uh, the, uh, the 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 model kit in CAD, so they can actually assemble it in in, in there and then just sort of slide through it and do a, a um, you know cut it at any at any point and be able to see inside where all the different pieces fit together. <laughs> It's amazing. The CAD designs, the work they must go through to be able mm. to make these is... Oh, man. It's one thing to put one together that's already been made, to, to make one from scratch, from CAD, yeah. to make sure that all the pieces fit and work. And mm. Yeah. And, of course, now they want to make them all as modular as possible so that kit bashing is easier. That um. is, is going to be quite a task. But <laughs> if they can do it... Hey. More power to them. And that's all. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. I'm seeing them indicating something, but I'm hmm. not seeing how I'm supposed to do it. What's that? This goes mm -hmm. into there. Okay. But there's this little note in Japanese. Oh, um, leading it, up into that. Um, it means that this piece mm -hmm. is that piece. Okay. So it's just, easy. It's yeah. the, this part to that part. Yeah, it should be. Um, but is, it, hmm, is there a little spot for the part, stud? I don't see I don't know, the... Maybe I missed a step somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, it's certainly implying that there's some um, backing to that. Oops. That's okay. Yeah, it's supposed um, to happen. Well, <coughs> when all else fails, follow the instructions. Yeah. Let's see. Um, there's this, there's this, there's this. this. Um, I see a backing back plate there. B nine. B nine. So I must B9, have missed the step. Is B nine still on? It's the... B nine. B nine. <laughs> B nine. <laughs> well, there it is. Oh, <laughs> easily solved. It's great having a second set of eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want a second brain. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, uh, this year's Gundam um, modeling championship stuff was just incredible. The dioramas fully put together. It's crazy. Um, so that's that. Is it? Is it? Uh, where is my? What am I looking at? Um, that's that. That's. The, mm, Hmm. What am I? What do I got? Ah. Wow, you're f so so far on yours. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. You get used to it. Um. So I think that fits there. Yeah. I may end up uh, getting another model kit at this point. Yeah. Um. And this fits. Ah, that's right. So this fits down in here like that. I'm assuming. Um, must um, get in there. Right. Don't just don't break. There we are. Yeah, sometimes these things require a little bit of a uh, little bit of pushing, a little bit of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, oh, you're gonna go there. <laughs> you may not think it, but it's gonna happen. Yeah. C. C. Was it twenty? Uh, C. C4. Oh no! C4! Uh, that 
just pops right off. I always fun when one just pops right off. <laughs> There's nothing on it. It looks like it was designed right out of the factory to just fly just into fall your off. Mm. Oh, that makes it so much easier. <laughs> yeah, missing a step uh, sure good. makes a difference. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, E9. It also goes a little faster as you go through because there's fewer stuff on the uh, the plates. See, quicker find. Yeah. I've already got one plate empty. Yay. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yeah, I might move on to a uh, uh, bigger kit next time. Mm, bigger uh, in which direction? <laughs> uh, all directions. All directions. Yes. Larger scale. Yeah. I'm, I'm More feeling, parts. I think it's master grade that is next highest up, and then perfect grade I think is the biggest. Perfect grade. And yeah. then there's the, we need a motor to drive this three <laughs> steps. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there is this one. Let's see here. Um, Voila. B24. B24. Yeah, if you wanted a big. Oh, come on, Jack. Don't be like that. B24 is a very small piece. You have to be careful not to knock those off. Those are supposed to be there. So, how's that for a model kit? That woman's is tough. Wow. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. That'd be a nice uh, addition to a room, wouldn't it? I, I'd, I'd post two as sentries outside my door. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what we got outside our studio. <laughs> They're watching guard right now. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun to put some sensor. Something that large you could yeah, put sensors in. Totally. As somebody walked by, it could say something, <laughs> say a phrase, and articulate an arm. That would be oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> State your name. Yep. <laughs> State your name for entry. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think very many were made. It was more of a uh, thing. Real grade. That's right. How long before you think uh, Gundam or Gundam-like models will be available for people with 3D printers? Oh, so that's a very good question. Um, we're a little ways off because the amount of detail you need to make all this fit together so well um, is just not there on desktop 3D printers. Hmm. Um, what about larger scale? Uh, if you go with a larger scale, the resolution of detail might was... be a little bit coarse, but with a larger uh, scale, the coarseness wouldn't be as much of an issue. Yeah, that would certainly help. Um, uh, I, so I've tried printing um, replacement parts for the model kits. So um, you have a 3D printer. I Tell have a 3D about printer, that. correct. <laughs> a 3D printer. So I, I actually have three of them. Um, three 3D printers. That, why not? Oh, With a fourth on the way. How many Ds would that make it? Yeah, <laughs> make it three Ds. Imagine that. <laughs> three um, 3D printers. So that's a nine, nine D. So nine you can D. go multi-dimensional. Exactly. Because <laughs> if you're gonna go, go, go big. big. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've, I've tried printing, and the, again, the level of detail is really, really difficult to get um, at this this scale. Um, you can certainly print um, uh, non-articulated models at mm. this scale, uh, where it's just basically one big hunk of plastic. Um, I'm currently working on a print of that, actually. But um, it gets a little tricky sometimes. Uh, that goes in like that. Aha. Uh -huh. um, so, yes, yeah, so it, it's a matter of quality. Um, I also suspect that the desktop uh, 3D printing technologies are in for a significant change in the next couple of years. Oh. Um, there's laser sintering. Laser um, sintering. Sintering? Laser sintering. Um, sintering. So, so, using a laser to yes. combine. Correct. Um, and it's basically you have a, a, a liquid solution and you hit it with a laser. Um, and what it lets you do in particular is not only does it give you potentially more quality, you fuse an entire layer at once. Um, so instead of you know drooling out plastic, it's just zzz, and you've got one layer done. Wow. Um, so they're claiming 
anywhere from one to two magnitudes of speed improvement. Is 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 that going to my goodness? <laughs> yeah. That that sounds revolutionary. It would be. Um, so folks are trying to get that to. So is that uh, in work. a fluid solution, and it f you as, mm -hmm. as the laser hits a layer, it changes yeah. state. And so uh, the way I've typically seen it is that the the build platform is upside down. Um, so you take this ooh, is interesting. Cool. You have all this interesting. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, all this is one form, and then this is another. Yeah. All within, and now huh. as I'm looking at it, oh yeah, and those this are whole darker. side is black. That's cool. And this is gray. They've gone to huh. a lot of effort to make those. Yeah. Not only uh, one frame, but two different materials, wonder, three different materials here. I wonder how they do that. Because you'd have to wait for one of it to harden. Well, then that's probably what they do. They do a uh, section at a time, and it must harden so incredibly quickly. And this has. So, so uh, they probably do one mold, then send mm, it to the next one, mm, which fills in the gaps between gotcha. them. Because it looks like oh yeah, where they that. join together. There's, a, there's, a, uh, there's just a punk. little post yeah. hole where it changes color. Look at that. Fascinating. Here you see the post holes that change color. Different materials within the same frame. That's, That's am that is amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> But laser, laser, yeah, is, sounds um, even even more phenomenal. Well, and like the, there's the resin printers now, which print in actual resin. They also use a um, uh, a laser, um, and you have a, a a a vat of of resin, and you zap that, and um, that's slower because you, the laser actually has to travel in, in, a, in a path. It's about the same speed as current desktop uh, plastic printers, mm -hmm. um, but you get much higher detail. Because um, again, instead of instead of extruding plastic from a nozzle, you're zapping resin with a laser, so you get much more detail. With the laser sintering, is that going to be a higher still? It should be, as, as I understand it. Um, yeah, it, it should be quite a bit nicer. Um, did I miss a foot? I think I missed a foot. Yeah. I missed by a mile once. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, they wanted you to do that twice. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you see here, um, this is 13 times 2. Oh, times 2. Yeah. I missed that one. Got to keep my eye out for those times 2. Yeah. So, fortunately, it's fairly obvious because it's the feet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of obvious what feet look like. You've already got a model of one. Um, I have not seen the full-size 3D printed R2-D2. That's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I, I saw part of that. I didn't get to uh, check it out in detail. Nice. And uh, at some point, that that would be a fun one to, to take a look yeah. at. Yeah. So what did you see? Uh, just that somebody had done it. Mm. Um, there, uh, Someone had a, a post of it, and of course, I was at work, so I couldn't really <laughs> linger on it. It was like, back to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, oh, i got to show this to you. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So, so th this person uh, had a chance to see it then, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, Hexbag, what do you, uh, what did you think of it? Did it look, uh, look like a reasonable R2D2? I would That's suppose with a large, with a larger scale, mm. um, yeah. some of the finer details, uh, it, it, it's it's a little bit easier to have when you do a larger scale the resolution is not as much of an issue mm. and I'm I'm betting he has access to some kind of industrial scale 3d printer because that would just take forever a lot of small yeah. parts yeah now I've, I've, I've seen someone has done uh, 3d printing with uh, a cement mixture oh yes yeah and uh, the idea of being able to take that and uh, set down a uh, a physical structure, mm -hmm. it, depending on the setting speed of the cement mm. mixture, uh, that could be a, a formidable way of <laughs> sending in the robots to uh, rebuild the town when uh, exactly. there's a disaster or set up somebody on Mars to at least have a physical structure, maybe a landing pad or, totally. or, or something of that nature without necessarily having to be there. Well, and that's the other thing, too. ship materials. Is... is um, you know, also the ability to um, respond to to things, where you can send something up there and say, "Okay, start printing," and then you realize, "Oh, whoa, 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 hold on, stop. Um, we have something else we want to do here because we've realized something about the topography." And so you can kind of change that as you go. Um, that that has quite some potential. 
Um, the nice thing about 3D printing is it's like, OK, this is um, uh, open to interpretation as long as you kind of know what you're doing. And that goes like that. Yeah. Come on, sticker. Be nice. Mm -hmm. The stickers sometimes, I find if I can get them on the tip of another blade, I can position mm. them easier, mm -hmm. like the edge of the screwdriver. Uh, I yeah. can use that as a tool for applying one corner yeah, yeah. and then pressing it around. Of course, now I'm saying that I, I have the most smallest <laughs> little sticker. <laughs> C24. The eyes. The eyes. Oh, boy. oh yeah. That's. I always have difficulty with the eyes. The eyes have it. I may have mm. to get some uh, batteries for the lamp on this. Oh yeah. Let's see. Want to swap out with this one for now? Um, I, I think I can get some light on here. Okay. We've got some light going through there. Next time around, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What is that? Oh. Incoming. Incoming um, weather flash alert. Flash flood warning until midnight. Avoid flood areas. Check over the video. Yeah, that's fine. I don't really have anything not too in, close. Not in a flood zone yet. Yeah, no. There, there is a stream near where I live, but it would take quite a, uh, quite a lot to make that uh, be dangerous. You mm. never know. Um. So that was that PC six. It interrupted me in the middle of my model kit. Imagine that. Where was I? How how dare they? <laughs> But it is nice that they're letting folks know, you know, about dangers. Let's see one. Always good to be better. Um, all right, thanks, Doug. Better informed. Yeah, better informed. Um, wow, makes all the sounds, lots of other functions. Looks fantastic. Cool. <coughs> the R two D two. That's amazing. That goes in the side. It's in right there. Is that right? Snug. Very snug. But should fit. There we are. And then that goes in the top. All right. All right. I've got my legs. Now for the crotchal reason region <laughs> hey hey yeah. a7 starting to get the eyes in there yeah Yeah, 3D printing is, is just amazing what folks can do. Actually, the R2D2s are amazing too. Um, e I imagine when you when when you create something like that yourself, you can also build in space for electronics. Mm, true. Maybe put in sensors. Yeah. And lights and mm -hmm. motors. Yeah. And mess with people. <laughs> have it follow around. <laughs> exactly. Well, and certainly you'll want to have motors so we can you know, move around. So you'll you'll have uh, that kind of stuff. Um, I was watching a video about that, and you know there are build groups for building R two D twos. Wow. Um, and folks will share information on how to do it. Um, it's one of the problems with trying to replicate a movie uh, prop, if you will, is that often there were multiple versions of that thing. So it's kind of, which which R2-D2 are you doing? That can, that can get tricky. Mm. And then a mashup of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they had that problem with um, Han Solo's blaster. Han Solo's blaster. Hmm. Um, there are several different versions of Han Solo's blaster, depending on which scene you're looking at in the film. Um, the films, I should say. So uh, you know, there is no... Singular. I wonder, was that from different the different films or different within the same film? Within sometimes. the same film, yeah. <laughs> an oversight and continuity. Yep. Um, yeah. No one is paying that much attention. Us in the U.S. are 
pretty hung up on continuity. <laughs> it's funny how people will approach creators of mm. uh, different media and point out issues of continuity that were mere oversights. What did you mean by this? <laughs> no, no, there was no meaning. We just... <laughs> But I That's noticed a, that in scene 12, it because, actually fits with this. Because we don't have a staff of 80 million people, <laughs> <laughs> we, and we have a deadline to release at some point. <laughs> but even, even, even with a lot of people, sometimes continuity is mm. a matter of perspective. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, from this angle, the car accident looked like this person was involved mm. at that angle. Absolutely. Not. Yep. Um, it's always a trickle... Tricky, tricky struggle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there's only so much you can do. I remember um, when they were working on uh, one of the Star Wars prequel movies, uh, when you see Anakin and Padme um, uh, in their sort of lovers um, uh, area, uh, their, their lovers um, villa, and they uh, walk outside and talk there, and um, it had rained the night before. Hmm. And it hadn't rained in the movie, you know, but <laughs> it, it, everything was, was the, the floor was wet. <laughs> and so it, someone said, okay, you got to find someone with towels and so forth. And, and George Lucas said, no, it's okay. Just shoot the, the scene. Just shoot. And they said, why? He said, N if anyone watching this scene is paying attention to the floor, we've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> They're not paying attention to the right part. Make sure they focus on the right part and we'll be okay. <laughs> I said, no one's going to notice that. And if they do, well then, okay, it rained the night before, you know, in, uh, in continuity. I, that's fine. Um, you know, stop worrying about it basically, which was a, uh, yeah. If a person approach. stopped for every detail, sometimes features would not be created just yeah. because there's so many unexpected events that may, cause a disruption exactly g1 what's one, g1 one trick that they do to make things look neat is sometimes they'll wet down streets in oh. and it gives it gives this old gray tarmac uh, sort of a darker black finish hmm and it looks nice cool so sometimes i'll see that in a movie and i'll say oh that's definitely a wet street <laughs> you know it gives it that fresh tarmac look ah, like freshly yes. paved everything's new and uh, learning about these tricks it's fun to to, to look <laughs> at them in a movie but i found if you're watching something with somebody for the mm. first time don't point that out yeah, no <laughs> let them enjoy the illusion and then when you watch it in reruns, <laughs> point it out and say, hey, did you notice this? Because yeah. <laughs> there's nothing worse than somebody who's, who's wat watching something for the first time. You're watching it for the first time and somebody's just ruining the fantasy of yeah. the fantasy film. Totally. Like, oh, no, I know. <laughs> no. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... However, you know, it's, it, there, there, are, there are certain things that are fun to be aware of before you go into it. Totally. Um... It's it's actually a good thing for the Star Wars movies, the, the new Star Wars um, sequels. Like I'm not learning lots of stuff about the behind the scenes and who's what. I want to go into those movies without knowing it. Yeah. And just experience and enjoy that that story fresh. I think it's going to be a lot more fun than the alternative. That's one thing where there there are a lot of movies out there that I'd mm -hmm. like to see. Yeah. I don't want to read any critics of them. Mm -hmm. And so when I go to get them, I can't sometimes avoid <laughs> commentary on it. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it into my list of movies to see, and I'll look at it at a later time. So mm -hmm. I've already forgotten what all the critics have said. Nice. And that way I can approach it fresh. Mm -hmm. Occasionally I'll remember one critic saying something, mm. and it won't be as big an impact of me going into the movie with a negative attitude because all yeah. the criticism was negative and I can give it a more objective, my own personal opinion of it rather yeah. than that's smart repeating what <laughs> other critics have already said. Well, exactly. And, um, it's one of the reasons why on my channel, I try to, you know, do kind of non spoiler reviews that are just, here's what's in it. Yeah. That way you don't really have to, you know, make up your own opinion. Exactly. Here's what it's about, General. Yep. And uh, 
if you're and that that was something else that was fun because mm. some people like a particular genre